Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to make up trypsin. In a previous video, I showed how to sterilize and set up the biosafety cabinet. This is a continuation of that video. In the previous lab, we made up PBS. We will be making a PBS EDTA solution first, and then we'll dissolve the trypsin in the solution of PBS and EDTA. First, let's wash our glassware. Use as little soap as possible. I'm getting a 250 ml beaker right now, scrubbing it clean because I don't know who the last one was that used it and I don't know what was inside. Give it a good rinse to make sure we're not gonna contaminate our solutions with any soap. I also like to rinse my glassware with distilled water when I'm done. It might be a good idea to dry this one before you use it. I'm going to use it right away. Please note the hood is sterile. This flask is not. I'm going to do something strange here. I'm going to add it into the hood without spraying it down. This is now contaminated. The purpose of this step is to take out 160 mils of PBS from our sterile bottle of PBS. What I want is the PBS remaining in the bottle to remain sterile. I don't care about the sterility in the beaker because I will be taking it out. So I'm going to eyeball 160 mils of PBS, making sure not to touch the bottle to the beaker as it is contaminated. And I'll take this back to the main lab. I've taken 160 mils because I want 150. The graduation marks on a beaker are not accurate at all. To make sure I don't have to go back and get more, I make sure I take more than I require. I will now obtain a graduated cylinder. It may have been a better idea to wash both the beaker and the graduated cylinder at the start. Again, a little bit of soap. That was probably too much. And then make sure you thoroughly rinse it. If I was the last one that used this glassware and I knew it was clean, I probably would have just rinsed it with water. But I don't know who used it and how well they cleaned it at the end. I never assumed someone did a proper job after they were done. Again, I like to rinse my glassware with distilled water before I get started. So in this graduated cylinder, I'm going to measure out 150 mils of PBS. We want to make up a 150 ml solution of trypsin. So I will pour up 150 mils in my graduated cylinder and I will dispose of the rest of the PBS in the beaker down the sink. There we are, 150 mils, and the rest, we don't need it. I will then pour back the 150 mils of PBS back into the beaker for dissolving my EDTA. Now, EDTA does not dissolve at room temperature. I must heat it up. I will use the hot plate that stirs to do that. On the left, I have the stir function. On the right, I have the heat function. I will turn up the heat to warm it up, and I will turn up the spin to about 300 RPMs. I will use a magnetic stir bar to help dissolve the EDTA. Make sure I rinse it and place it inside. Don't go faster than 400 RPMs. You'll end up spraying liquid all over the lab. Now I want to control the heat so I'm going to leave the heat on but I'm going to take the beaker off while I measure out my EDTA powder. Now EDTA is a chelator. It will be used to sequester any calcium or magnesium ions that might be in our solution. This is important for trypsin to actively work. Calcium ions have a tendency to bind to trypsin and 
deactivated. If I make my trip set up in EDTA, well, any calcium ions will be chelated by the EDTA and won't affect the trypsin. We're going to measure out 0 0.0558 grams. We tear the balance. And here's our EDTA. That's a very large molar mass. We're going to be making up a one millimolar solution in our PBS. Why don't we use water to make this up? Well, if I added water directly to my cells, the cells would be in a hypotonic state, water would flow into the cells and the cells would lyse. As a result, we can never add just pure water to the cells. Uh, this never happens. I'm almost right on first try. A lucky day in the lab. I will now place my beaker on my hot plate. It is warmed up. I will suck up some solution, place it in with the powdered EDTA to make sure I get all the powder into the actual beaker. Once again, EDTA will not dissolve into the solution at room temperature. I'm going to heat it up. It will only take a minute or two once it heats up to dissolve completely. Please make sure you don't boil this. When liquid boils, you see those bubbles coming out. The bubbles, you're losing water vapor and your solution will become more concentrated. To get a better idea of whether or not the solution is dissolved, the powder is white, the bench is black. Place it on the bench, look down into it until you do not see any of the white crystalline EDTA present in the solution. Once it's completely dissolved, Remove it immediately from the heat source. If you preheat your hot plate, it'll take a short amount of time. Notice how I move the beaker. By doing this, the magnetic stir bar goes around the edges. If you don't do that and it just spins in the middle, it'll push the powder to the edges and it may not be dissolved very quickly. As you can see, as I move it around, the stir bar spins around the edges, making sure it gets dissolved as quickly as possible. A little bit more time. Once it is dissolved, turn the hot plate off immediately. We must cool it down. We're going to add trypsin in. Trypsin is an enzyme. If you heat it up, it'll denature. There we go. EDTA is dissolved. We will make sure we turn off the hot plate. We will leave the beaker on the bench. The bench is cool. It will help cool down the EDTA PBS solution quickly. We'll leave it for some time and then come back. We're back now. If you can pick up the solution in your hand and it doesn't hurt, it's good to go. Also double check to make sure your hot plate is cool. Once again, it shouldn't be painful if you put your hand on it. Now I will turn on only the stir feature and keep it very slow. Notice I have it set to 60 RPMs. I will now go to the freezer, minus 20, to get my porcine trypsin. We're using a 0.25% weight by volume solution of trypsin. Now, just as heat could denature the enzyme, 
Stirring too quickly can do the same thing. As a result, we want to stir very slowly for a long period of time. An hour would be great. We've done the calculations. I'm going to measure out 0 0.375 grams for a 150 ml solution. We place on our weigh boat and we tear it. Close enough. When you're done with Tripson, make sure you place it back in the freezer. We will now dissolve this in our cooled solution of PBS EDTA. Normally I would say use a pipette to rinse it out, however the Tripson tends to clump up. So I'm going to try and scrape it off with my scupula here. It's also very light. It tends to float on the surface. I'm going to take a pipette and just going to sort of stab the surface to break the surface tension so that the powder will dissolve. Again, it will clump to the sides of the pasture pipette, so make sure you rinse it off before you remove it completely from the solution. And now we'll let that gently spin for about an hour at a very low stir rate. While we're waiting, we can go back and set up our hood. Now remember, I placed a contaminated beaker into the hood. So I had to clear everything out. I'm going to re-sterilize it. You've probably seen this in another video, We're getting a bucket of bleach for any of our components that will come in contact with cells or the media, We're adding a bit of soap, a bit of bleach and about two inches of water. A 
I also always use a 250 mil speaker as a waste speaker. The reason why I'm setting up the hood now is for sterile filtration. Here I obtain a 150 mil sterile filter. Trypsin cannot be autoclaved to sterilize. It will denature the protein. As a result, it must be sterile filtered. We must wait for the please wait symbol on the screen to disappear before we can start working in the hood. We'll get a plastic bag for any non-contaminated paper products we might have. And we'll tape that to the side of the hood. Notice I am right-handed, so my bucket and my bag will be on the left side. If you are left-handed, you will place your bucket and your bag on your right side. Everything that goes in the hood must be sprayed down with 70% ethanol. We use 70% ethanol, not isopropanol. The please sit wait symbol is now gone. Now we can sterilize our hood. At this point, the blowers are running at top capacity. We will spray down the plate at the bottom with 70% ethanol and wipe it down, moving back and forth, moving towards the front of the hood, pulling contaminants out. Now everything that goes in must also be sprayed down with 70% ethanol. I'm going to get a test tube rack. I'm going to obtain four 50 mil conical tubes. When I'm done with the trypsin, I'm going to aliquot it into four separate tubes. One tube will keep at four degrees in the refrigerator the other three will freeze. Trypsin is an enzyme. We can freeze it once, but if it sits in the fridge for too long, it will lose its activity. Here are the 50 mil conical tubes. Make sure you get one that is sealed. If it's open, it would be contaminated. Once again, it must be sprayed down with ethanol before we place it in the hood. I'm now gonna open the bags start setting up my hood. You always want to minimize the items that are in the hood when you're working in it. That's why I'll set this up first. Looking for a tear point here, and I discovered this bag does not have a tear point. As a result, I'll just puncture a hole in it with my thumb, but a small hole that I can tape up. I'm going to obtain four of these 50 mil conical tubes. They have screw caps, so I can seal them up tightly. Gonna fold over that hole and leave it off to the side for now. I'll open my filtration unit, looking for the tear point. There is one on this one, and it is right here. Right there. Looks like a little notch. If you pull it, it'll open up no problem. We take out the filtration unit, and there's a cap wrapped separately. The bag for the cap also has a tear point on it. We'll open that up, but leave the cap in the bag. Remember what I said about not leaving items in the hood that are not required? Well, I've already taken my four test tubes. I don't need the rest. So I will remove this bag from the hood. Please note, I just can't remove it any way I like. I must keep the tubes inside sterile. I will fold over the edge where the opening was, and I will tape it shut. Now this can be wet with ethanol, so the tape might not stick. So what I do is I wrap it around on itself, and I stick tape to tape. If this opens up outside the hood, we can't use it. I'm going to put many rounds of tape around it to make sure this remains in a sterile condition.
There we go. Still sterile for the next person. I've torn my glove. If you tear your glove, stop what you're doing. Go get yourself a new one. The sterile filtration unit requires a vacuum pump to pull the liquid through the sterile filter. Vacuum pumps can be located underneath the hood. They are very heavy. You would like to probably use two hands for this. On the front, there are two ports, in and out. In is vacuum, out blows air out. Don't hook up to the wrong one. Inside your hood, there are outlets. I will spray my hands. And I will plug it in on the side. There's a little door that opens. I will then wrap this along the side to try and limit its capacity to contaminate. I now need what's known as a trap. We don't ever want water to go directly into the vacuum pump itself. As a result, we have this trap. It looks like a big Erlenmeyer flask with two hoses coming out of it. One out the side and one out the top. The one out the side, the short one, will plug into the vacuum pump. The long one will go into my biosafety cabinet. If water sucked in, it'll go into the Erlenmeyer flask, not into my vacuum pump. Find the port that says in and place the rubber tube onto it. It can be a challenge. Now, both the vacuum pump and the Erlenmeyer flask, the trap, will sit on the ground. Be careful not to break the trap. We want to place this hose into the hood. We want to make sure we don't contaminate, so I will sterilize the outside of the hose, the part that will go in the hood with 70% ethanol. To ensure the hose stays inside the hood and doesn't flop out, we're going to tape it to the side. The way I tape it will be specific for a hose. If you just put tape over top, the tape will peel off. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to create a little handle for it. We're going to tape it, make a little loop, and then tape it again. Now the hose can move about and it won't peel the tape off. Much more stable. We'll now attach the hose to the filtration unit. It goes in right here on this white port. Notice if it's the wrong angle, it falls over. If I go the other way, it'll fall backwards. So what you want to do is rotate that little port until you let go and it stays upright. We'll open the lid up, pour our solution inside. We're now ready to filter our trypsin. It has been stirring for an hour now, and I'll bring this over to my sterilized hood. Now please do not spray this beaker with ethanol. I do not want to contaminate my trypsin with ethanol. As a result, you'll see how I do it. We do not want to spray our beaker with ethanol. I'm going to spray one hand, reach inside, open the lid, and pour the entire contents including the stir bar, into the top. I will cover it up. Notice it will not fall over. I will then reach down. A button on the top turns on the vacuum pump. Vacuum pressure is applied and it pulls the liquid through the sterile filter into the bottom reservoir. Don't worry. Your magnetic stir bar will not go through the filter. When complete, turn off the vacuum. Sterilize your hands and then Remove the hose by pulling off that white port from the side to release the pressure. We can now use the cap to cap it up. 
the top part screws on like a large cap. You can see I can unscrew it. And using Indiana Jones skills, I can swap one cap for the other. This now goes into my bleach. Don't forget to fish out your stir bar later on. If you were going to be using a lot of trypsin in the near future, you could just store your trypsin in this container here. We will not be doing that, so we're going to aliquot it into four separate tubes. Three will be frozen, and one will keep in the fridge. I don't need this bottle anymore, so I'm going to take the cap off and get rid of it. Notice I've loosened the caps first, and I'm just going to pour in about 40 mils, just by eye. This is a 50 mil tube. Don't ever fill a 50 mil tube up with 50 mils of liquid and then freeze it. The water will expand and they'll pop the cap off. So I will pour into three of the tubes 40 mils. The last tube you will not have 40 mils. I will just pour the remainder of the contents into my fourth tube. Now we're going to label the tubes. I label it trypsin and I'll put a lot number on there. In my lab, the lot number is the date followed by the initials of the person who created it. I'll use a Sharpie marker to write directly onto the tube. I will write trypsin. I'll write the date. It is the 21st of January, 2021. And my initials are AHC. As a result, you know what the solution is, when it was made and who made it. Once again, I'm going to store one of these tubes in the fridge and the other three in the freezer. The one in the fridge is the working stock. Once that one is empty, we will take one from out of the freezer and thaw it in the fridge. Make sure to do this a day beforehand. Do not warm trypsin in a water bath. You will damage it. Let it thaw overnight in the fridge. So once again, one will be stored at 4 degrees and the other three at minus 20. We are now done, it's time to clean up. I would like you to leave the lab in better condition than when you found it. I repeat, make sure it's cleaner than when you came. We'll place all of our items into our bleach to make sure they get decontaminated. We'll remove our trap. And now I will sterilize the hood the same way I started. I will spray down the inside with 70% ethanol and wipe back and forth, moving from the back of the hood to the front of the hood. I'll unplug the vacuum pump and close the sash. The light and the blower will now turn off. This is non-contaminated paper. It goes in regular garbage. Make sure there's never any glass in there or contaminated products. I will start by removing the plastic. We're going to autoclave this, putting it in the bin over here. Sorry. Just give me a minute, I'm recording right now. The top of the filtration unit, we're gonna autoclave that as well. Again, place it in a biohazard bag. We'll take out our beakers, give them a thorough rinse, and let them dry on some paper towel. 
remind yourself to fish out your stir bar. Be careful when you dump this. If it splashes back, you're going to get very wet. Please rinse the bucket out with some water. And place it back where the buckets go. Don't forget your stir bar. Disconnect the trap, and we'll put that back where we got it from. I think it's very important that your lab remain organized. When you take something out and you use it, put it back where you found it. We store the vacuum pump underneath the hood. You can see there's a little shelving unit here. Remember, it's very heavy. We'll push our chairs in, and our trypsin is ready for subculturing. Put everything back, and we'll see you in the lab.